So the first step in selling your art online is all about packaging and presenting your art properly. And I learned this the hard way when I was showing my art in London during the freeze week. So I arrived at the fair, I nervously untyped my art and I brought a test piece with me that I had been trying to sell for months, but nobody wanted to buy it. Anyway, my heart is pounding in my chest because I've invested thousands of dollars to be there in boot, transportation costs, costs of the boot, accommodation, everything. And so basically my entire savings. And so this had to work. This was an all or nothing situation. And this was true for most of the artists there. And so everybody is nervous. Anyway, when I put up my boots, I decide to go for a walk a half an hour, an hour and meet some of the artists. And I say to the person that's with me that that is going to help me during this fair to price the test piece at $500. And as I came back from my round, I was completely shocked the test piece sold. And what's more, she misunderstood the price point. Instead of pricing it at $500, she priced it at $5,000. And so I'm extremely happy. Everything is going great. This is the first day of the fair. As the fair is over, I become less happy because here's the thing. The only piece that sold was that test piece that I mispriced at $5,000. All of my other art didn't sold. The art that had proof of work that already sold beforehand that was better from my perspective better. I priced it at $1,000, some $1,500, some here and there $300, $400 smaller pieces and I just couldn't believe this. I couldn't understand this. How is it possible that the piece that is accidentally mispriced sells and everything else doesn't sell? And after the fair is over I talked to a dealer and I explained this to her and she's like yeah that's absolutely normal. Here's the thing Dries. When people are watching the art they first look at the price and then they look at the art and in London people are not interested in prices lower than three thousand dollars for art I bet if you would have priced it higher you would have sold more what what is this sorcery pricing something higher and then also selling more this is insane. And so I immediately understood that number one, I don't know anything about pricing. And number two, I desperately have to figure out how to price my art strategically so that I don't make these mistakes and don't lose out on these sales. And so the question becomes, how can you price your art so that you can sell more at higher prices? Because sometimes pricing something at $5,000 will sell more than pricing it at $500 or $50. Now figuring this out would have been extremely easy if I would just have asked this dealer that I was talking with, how is this possible? Why are people in London not interested in something of a thousand dollars? And how should I price my art? But I was very young and I had an ego driven brain. And so I didn't want to admit that I didn't do anything about art, nothing about business, nothing about selling, and that I was in fact a poor artist. And so I didn't actually do that. It took me much longer to figure it out. Luckily, I found a solution when I was reading about contrast principles, psychological tricks, and how to apply that to the art world. So let me explain. Now, in order to explain this, let's take the following example. Let's take three buckets of water. The right bucket of water is extremely hot. The middle one is just room temperature, and the left one is extremely cold. And then take your both hands, put the right hand in the right bucket, and the left hand in the left bucket, and let it sit there for two minutes. Now, after two minutes, you take both of your hands and you put them in the middle bucket of water. Now what's going to happen? Well, your right hand that comes out of extremely hot water is going to feel cold and your left hand that comes out of cold water is going to feel extremely hot. Even though they are in the same bucket of water that has the same temperature. Now why is this something you intuitively know of course? It's because of the contrast principle. Your right hand comes from hot water and so the neutral water, the room temperature water feels cold. Subsequently with the left hand comes from cold and so it feels hot. If you would let your hand sit in that neutral bucket of water for two more minutes, both of them would feel the same temperature. And so what does this mean for artists? How do you apply this to the art world when it comes to price your art strategically. Well, my thousand dollar pieces were priced at a normal price in Belgium, a little bit higher than the monthly rental price that people pay for living in a house or apartment. Now in London, this thousand dollar piece is one fifth of the average monthly rental price. And so what happens is that it feels in London like a $200 piece. And the thing about a $200 piece, if it's fairly large, is that it must be worthless. Why is it otherwise priced at $200, $200? And my $300 smaller sketches at that time, 
they probably felt for London people like $40 pieces. And here's the thing, people value things with their credit cards. The more they pay for something, the more they value it. And so my art in the eyes of Londoners simply looked like worthless pieces of art. The reality is that selling a painting in London for $5,000 for a feel at the lower end of the market, selling that same painting for $5,000 in Bangladesh will feel like a $50,000 piece. And I didn't understand this. Now let's think a little bit deeper about this. Let's say you are going to a gallery and you are looking at an artist that has the same track record as you, the same amount of exhibitions, the same amount of magazine features, awards, all of that stuff. And you see that they sell two types of artworks, normal size artworks, 50 by 70 for $5,000 and then big scale works for $20,000. And you think by yourself, well, they are selling for $20,000. So that means that my big scale artworks are priced or should be priced at $20,000 because that is the market value. Now what you don't know in this particular scenario or you might not understand because you don't know the contrast principle is that this gallery has a collector base that is predominantly interested in smaller scale works. That's just the way they roll, that's their strategy. And so the bigger scale artworks are not there because the gallery wants to sell them. No, the gallery is using the contrast principle in their favor. They're using the bigger scale artworks to make the smaller artworks look more favorable, look more affordable while still maintaining that luxurious artistic vibe. And so if you don't understand this, then you might think that you should also price your art at 20K price points or at least your bigger scale artworks at 20K price points. And if you would do that, you wouldn't sell anything because this gallery is also not selling those bigger scale artworks. And so you have to be very cautious about the contrast principle in all scenarios of art. Let's say you're going to sell on online galleries like Etsy, for example, and you see that on these online galleries, the original art is being sold for $300, $400, $500. That's kind of what they are selling it for. Then guess what? You will not be able to sell anything at a $10,000 price point, even though that is the value of your art. Why? Because of that contrast principle, because of the setting in which you sell your art. Now, before we go on to the second step in our selling art online process, I have a surprise for you. I made a 20 page art fair guide where I share everything I learned from those art fairs in London, as well as other exhibitions in Berlin, Buenos Aires, Milan. I'll share it at the end of the video for free. In the second step, we want to use the biggest opportunity the art world has ever seen when it comes to driving traffic down with your art, getting eyeballs and getting more sales. A lot of artists, including myself, have mixed feelings when it comes to social media. I remember in the beginning, I was trying to post on a regular basis, trying to post on a daily basis, putting a crazy amount of work in, but I was not getting any likes, not getting any comments, and more importantly, not getting any money. It felt absolutely horrible. It felt like I was working for free, marketing these social media companies without getting anything in return. On top of that, I was also doubtful whether or not the art making process was actually sufficient for the extreme posting schedules that were required to be successful on social media. If you have to post on a daily basis in order to be successful and you are making oil paintings, for example, a painting process where the drying process can take several months, how are you gonna do that? How are you going to post on a daily basis? On top of that, when I was looking at the posts that were getting all of the likes, that were getting all of the success, I saw the same faces, the same eyes, the same themes, the same styles. Nowadays, you have artists who are taking paintings and simply turning it around in front of a camera. And with all due respect, but when I was looking at the art that was working very well, I didn't really want to make that type of art. This was not my style and I didn't want to be known. And still today, I don't want to be known for somebody who is able to turn paintings around. And so the question becomes, how can we solve all of these creative limitations that exist on social media while making posts that are true to our style, to our vision, to what we want to do as artists and having those posts also be successful and go viral to some extent. Well, let's address all of these problems one by one. Let's start with the insane upload schedules where you have to upload on a daily basis in order to be successful with, for example, oil paintings. Let's say you paint and it takes you two months to make one painting. How are you going to upload on a daily basis? And is this even a problem to start off with? Well, the reality is that you could make an unlimited amount of posts about that one painting. You could make 50 posts or 100 posts. You could post about the color choices that you made. 
page. You could post about preliminary sketches. Perhaps one day you then really felt like painting and you could make a post about how to overcome that resistance, how to overcome that laziness and that postponing. And now you have some kind of productivity oriented video. And so you can really make an unlimited amount of posts. And so it's very easy to see that these doubts that I was having in the beginning, these problems were just laziness in disguise these these were just excuses to not post on a daily basis and there was actually no problem at all and then the second problem that all art on social media looks the same reads the same is the same and just not unique enough it's not really a problem on social media it's a problem of human nature if you look at the best art in any given time frame what you will see is that the best art looks like the best art they all kind of look similar all of the impressionists look similar it was all impressionistic it was all cubistic it was all whatever it was at that time and today if you go to the best art fairs where the best artists are showing all of that art also kind of looks the same and the reason for that is simply that when people are copy pasting from the best they also rise to the top and so at the top you have similar looking works and this is not only true in the art world it's true all over the place in all market fields if you look at the best smartphones all of them are kind of the same if you look at the best podcasts all of them are kind of the same it's a guy at a desk with a guest wow and so this is just something that is going to be the case in everything that you do and the reason why i was kind of complaining about this or feeling doubtful about this was nothing more than again an excuse to postpone and not do the work and for the third one being doubtful about the hypes well the reality is that nobody is forcing you to follow the hypes nobody is forcing you to turn paintings around and you can basically make whatever content that you want as long as you provide value to the audience the audience will want to watch that and so again these doubts that i was having were not a description of social media they were a description of my inner insecurities my inner laziness and my inner desire to postpone now in the third step of our sales process, we want to have the best possible strategies to sell our art that are designed for our personal circumstances borrowed from the best artists out there. And so here's what I would do. I remember going to these gallery openings, exhibition openings, partially for the free drinks, partially to network a little bit. And I would be walking around there. Obviously I'm way too much of an introvert. And so I was stressed out. I would never talk to anyone. Networking was definitely not part of the equation. And I would look at the art full of wonder and awe and admiration and i would be thinking and trying to learn why this art is showing in this gallery and why my art is not showing in this gallery and as i was trying to learn i would fantasize about these artists how much money they must be making in these galleries sometimes in solo shows and how many girls they must be getting and how fantastic and amazing their life must be and i would be jealous every single time that they would go to these exhibition openings and sometimes i would see art and i would think by myself hey wait a minute I can make this art in fact I can make this art way better and so why are they showing in galleries and I'm not showing in galleries at all as a matter of fact why am I struggling to get my first sale and this would happen several times a month every time I would go to an opening I would feel jealous about the artists that were showing there until one day I decided to look at the facts to look at the numbers I still remember this day very vividly it was 2016 a long time ago I decided to read the gallery report of Magnus Resch. And on page 11, I would read something that would change the course of my career. Here's the thing I read. 55% of galleries are making less than 200K in revenue a year with zero to two employees. And so I quickly did the math. 200K in revenue, they have to pay two employees. So that leaves them with 120K. And then from that, they still have to, well, pay themselves and also pay the 10 to 20 artists that they've exhibited that year. And on top of that, you also have to take into account the 80-20 rule, which states that 20% of artists will be generating 80% of the revenue and so what does this mean well it means that most of those galleries are not making any money most of the art that is shown in those galleries will after the exhibition when it doesn't get sold just go right to the studio of the artist and I see artists falling for this type of comparison trap all of the time they will go on social media and they will look at some 18 year old art that is getting thousands of likes and then they will feel bad about their own art because their art is only getting 
getting 40 likes and then it will start doubting if it's not too late if they're not too old or if they just simply don't know anything about technology when in fact in reality those 18 year old artists are not selling anything because here's the thing you cannot make a human connection when you're turning paintings around in front of a camera this is just simply not something that people connect with and so these artists that are getting thousands of likes they are not building human connection they are not selling anything amateur artists are comparing themselves to the fantasy they have of other artists while professional artists compare themselves to the numbers and the facts now before we go to the next section as promised there's a link in the description with a free pdf art fair guide for beginner arts where i share tips personal experiences from art fairs from exhibitions london Buenos Aires, berlin and these are personal experiences so you can't really get them anywhere else link in the description it's free now there's one more thing that is standing in your way to become a successful artist in the beginning of this video i shared how you should price your art at five thousand dollars instead of fifty dollars but what if you want to sell it at fifty thousand dollars or five hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars simply increasing your price is not going to do the trick anymore at those price points and so there is something else there is one skill that all top level artists have in common to push your art to any price point you desire i've talked about it in another video called drowning in insult art the one skill that makes all others obsolete link in the description and in the end screen don't forget to blah 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 that said get the hell out of